Hey guys, I'm Rachel. I'm Bobby. And I'm Dave. And today, we're gonna show you how to get a capture with the Neural DSP Quad Cortex. The Quad Cortex uses unique biomimetic AI technology to learn and replicate the sonic characteristics of any physical amplifier, cabinet, or overdrive pedal with amazing accuracy. The neural algorithm perceives sound in a way that's closest to human hearing, which makes the captures as natural sounding as possible. So Bobby, how do we have all this set up? Starting from the guitar, we're going into return one, and then out of the Quad Cortex via the capture out to our amplifiers. Going to our cab and then recording it, with three microphones, an SM57, a Royer R121, and a Neumann U87. From there, the mics are being summed inside of Pro Tools, being sent out of Pro Tools to input one on the quad cortex. Lastly, we are monitoring through outputs one and two on the unit itself. And now that may seem kind of complicated, luckily there is a built-in diagram for us, which you can scroll through right there. All right, Dave, why don't we set a level? You can just play for us. Sweet. The auto set function makes it really easy. So we're going to go ahead and make our first capture. Dave, what kind of capture are we going to make? Uh, so we're going to start out with the SLO 100. Um, it's a super beefy head, especially for like leads and rhythms. So we're going to make a rhythm tone uh, kind of in like the modern, like high gain territory uh, and see how it sounds. Let's do it. Are we ready for alien sounds? Here uh, come the alien sounds. Cool. I am ready for aliens. I love Atari. It really <laughs> reminds me of that. It's really, it, those are Atari sounds. <laughs> it's definitely Atari sounds. Yeah. <laughs> Space Invaders? This is, my, this is my voicemail. <laughs> dial up. <laughs> this is dial up. <laughs> I think actually there's some Legend of Zelda in there too. There's some Twilight Princess sounds. <laughs> oh yeah, I hear that too. <laughs> Sweet, capture's done. Uh, Want to play a little bit and we'll check it out? Yeah. I, I can't tell the difference. Yeah, it's yeah. it's pretty much dead on. Like there's like a slight, a slightly darker tonality in the capture, but it's like very minuscule. So like with like a slight bit of EQ adjustment, it it feels exactly the same um, as the amp. Like there's no difference in feel at all, and like it's pretty much like 100. percent And there's none of that like that like digital hiss that like you sometimes get. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of the amp sims have kind of that upper or high end like nastiness that you don't like. Bees in a tin can. Bees in a can. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely impressive because especially with 100 watt heads, you just have so much headroom and low end presence. And like to be able to like flip back and forth between the actual amp and the capture and to not have any discernible difference between the low end is like insane. And how does it feel? Does it, it feel the exact same or feels, different? It, it feels the exact same. Like it, it doesn't feel different at all. Um, and that's like the, the really wild part, especially from like uh, a performance perspective because like when you really get the sound dialed in like in rehearsals or like in the studio and you really want that exact same feel like it's hard to get that with modelers and like other systems that do kind of similar things but this one like totally nails it and I would just say that capture process is so fast and easy I mean you do have to sit and let it process but uh, compared to some other ones, I feel that this is really simple. You just kind of plug in and go. Yeah, this is super easy. So we're going to make a preset with the capture that we just made. 
Uh, so we have unplugged our input uh, from the Pro Tools session or from Pro Tools, uh, and we have switched it over to our guitar. Uh, we've got our SLO 100 capture loaded up here, which is located in my captures. Uh, so we're going to start out just to hear how it sounds. <laughs> sounds awesome um and very little ground noise almost no ground noise at all which is the number one problem that i've had uh when making captures at home is just dirty electricity just 60 cycle hum all sorts of things that just happen when you're in you know a, a home studio environment uh so even then like if we're making a rhythm tone we can throw uh, a gate in the front just to tighten things up a little bit take away like just a tiny bit of ground noise uh, the adaptive gate's really good. Clamps down super fast, uh, very accurate. Um, so normally for like a rhythm tone, we're going to have an overdrive in front. You know, something like an 808 style. So we have a green 808 right here. Uh, usually what I do is bring the overdrive section down push the level up, and then tone is going to be to taste. Really awesome. If we want to tighten things up, we can push that gate a little bit more, uh, maybe mess with the tone, bring that down. I'm going to add some effects that we can uh, tap in uh, via pedal board mode or scene mode. So you can take this distortion uh, rhythm sound and you can more or less turn that into a lead sound uh, using boosts or toggling on different effects. And then we could save that in the cloud. So I'll add like a ping pong delay, which, you know, for a lead tone, it's going to be great. Maybe I'll add that in parallel too. And then we'll add reverb, go for a cave reverb, and we're going to mix that in. Awesome. That's Those effects great. sound great, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, awesome built-in effects. Um, there's a lot of updates that I've read about that are coming as well. Uh, one thing that's really great about Neural is that they've got uh, killer uh, delays and reverbs already uh, and awesome modulation. Uh, the overdrive is really great. But I mean, as first, a simple lead tone, this works really well. Awesome that you can tweak it after you've already done the capture too. So you're not stuck with what you did. You can totally adjust it to your heart's content and add effects, add an overdrive even, that's really cool. Yeah, uh, pretty much like building like an entire rig more or less and kind of having uh, the pedal board section of it uh, being virtual uh, gives you an immense amount of control over your sounds and being able to take, you know, the 100 watt head and bring it out on the gig without having to haul, you know, 50, 60 pounds worth of amp is really awesome. And even if you do want to bring that amplifier and you want to run like, a, you know, a split rig where you're doing a DI from the Cortex and then running a signal uh, from the amplifier to have the best of both worlds, you can do that. So we're going to save the preset that we have. Uh, what's cool is that, you know, whether you're in stomp mode or scene mode or preset mode, uh, you can kind of activate more or less your, your lead sound. Uh, and we could add more things like a compressor or a boost. Uh, for now, we're just going to have those uh, spatial effects. Uh, and we're going to save this guy right here. So we're going to do uh, SLO rig. And then we're going to tag Sweetwater Studios. Side note, the touchscreen is very fast and responsive, which is great. Cool. And now we have our preset made. We have it tagged so we can search it. Overall, awesome first capture. Um, sounds really exactly like the amp does. In, you know, typical SLO fa uh, fashion. Uh, it's got that kind of squishy uh, distortion characteristic to it, uh, but it's like very like harmonically brilliant and open. So 
super awesome. Cool, so I think we're gonna try and make another capture now, but we're gonna go to a different amp head. And uh, what kind of tone are we gonna go for, Dave? Um, so we're using the Generator 120 by Rev. Uh, it's a super awesome modern high gain amplifier. So we're going for an aggressive rhythm tone. Uh, and I'm gonna leave uh, back by distortion down a little bit so we can hit it on the front end with an overdrive, tighten it up with a gate, uh, and we're gonna make uh, another awesome capture. So I'm stoked. Let's go. Here we go. Sweet, so this capture's finished. Uh, we're gonna compare between the Cortex and then the actual amp. Do you wanna make a, make a little game out of this one and see if you can guess which is which? Yeah, let's try that. Cool. I like this game. All right. I have a blindfold that will. <laughs> All right, here we go. Start playing whenever you're ready. So there's one, two. One. Two. Which is which? Is the one that I just played the Cortex? Correct, yes. Okay. The hum, the, the hum gives it away, hum, but yeah. actually, that's pretty impressive that the Cortex sounds better than the amp, it's, kind of. I, I couldn't really... It's less noisy. Well, the, that's the only thing that gave it away is the fact that you can still hear like the, the, the ground hum or the room, hum coming from the room. Um, but I, I was like struggling. I'm like, I don't know if, if I'm playing the Cortex or the amp one because they feel and sound exactly the same in this capture. Like there's not really any discernible difference between like uh, the presence or the brightness or like the depth, like the pick attack is the same. Like the, like they feel exactly the same. It's pretty wild. So with the Cortex being so much quieter without any of that extra ground hum, does it affect like how you build your signal chain? Like with, um, with um, gates and stuff like that? Uh, it allows them to run way more efficiently Especially like with live amps that I've had before, I've had uh, Mark V, I've had uh, PB5150 block letter, which I still have. I have to run those gates very aggressively, especially at venues where you do have a lot of ground noise. So it's the most efficient way to really run a rig. You get the benefits of really having the feel, uh, but having just all this headroom and not having any of that that operating noise that you deal with uh, with the physical amp. So I think it's great. Yeah, I would say from a live sound perspective or a studio perspective, yeah. to be honest, it's a great benefit to not have to deal with any hum or noise coming from the amp. It just kind of solves a lot of your problems up front. It makes gating it in the box a lot easier. I know that much. <laughs> uh, so what we'll do is we'll make a new preset. So we have our SLO rig saved right there. Um, we're gonna grab our capture, uh, neural captures. My captures and find where we recently are. We got Rev Purple Channel. So already off the bat, this is what it sounds like without any additional effects. We're gonna make a rhythm tone. So because we're gonna do that, we're gonna add some of the basics, you know, like that adaptive gate again. Kind of make it a little bit chuggier. So we're gonna boost the noise reduction up. We'll move this guy over and we'll start again with an overdrive. Um, we could try something different. Um, the myth drive is pretty cool. I've played with that one before. That's chunky. Very chunky. Um, we're gonna make it um, a little bit heavier. So we're gonna really kind of push that noise gate so it kind of cuts off those extra transients. Uh, and we'll do the same thing where we add, you know, kind of a delay uh, that we can toggle on and off to make kind of more of a lead tone when we want. Um, there is enough usable gain in there where you don't really need a boost, which I'll demonstrate. <laughs> Yeah, and so, you know, that's just with, uh, you know, an overdrive and the gain settings that we have on the Rev on the Purple Channel. Um, there's really no additional boosting going on, but the bright switch is engaged on the Rev. 
Uh, and we're really running our distortion kind of around like nine o'clock, 10 o'clock. So it's not running super hot, but this amp has a ton of gain. So it's more than enough, but for rhythm tone itself. <laughs> Like, that's already, like, probably one of my favorite. It sounds tones. awesome. <laughs> yeah. Like, and it's an exciting process, too. Like, it, it's so fun to take the analog gear that you that you love and that you get really excited about and be able to, like, take it and create that perfect snapshot and then be able to add more to it. And I think that's what's so cool about the Cortex is it kind of takes that world of both, like, modeling and control uh, and capturing and gives you this great ecosystem uh, where all of a sudden now you have just all these different variables that really create the perfect tone experience, which is awesome. We'll add like, you know, maybe uh, one other effect, try something a little bit different. Uh, so one thing that is really cool that they have uh, is a pitch shifter. Uh, so if you want to tune down, uh, that's one efficient way to do it. So we have our mix set at 100. Um, you know, off the bat, sounds like this. Sounds the same, but now I want to go down a whole step. Like, and obviously like the further you go, you start to get a little bit more discern, like noticeable latency. You know, if we go down like two whole steps. <laughs> um, but really, uh, really helpful uh, to be able to have something that works really well for changing tuning uh, without having to change guitars. It's a big one, especially if you're on the road and you can't bring like a whole guitar boat and you have like two guitars. This is a great way to get around that problem. Awesome. And it sounds really natural too. It doesn't sound like a, pick, a pitch shift pedal. Sometimes those sound really weird and artifacty and kind of unusable. That just sounds like your guitar was in that tuning, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, I would not be afraid to record that in the studio for no, sure. No, not at all. And it's getting it's getting more common too. You see a lot of guitar players who are aren't going out with as many guitars. Uh, you know, things like uh, the cost of checking extra bags. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just you know all the, and wanting to just travel lighter too. Yeah. Like that's part of why I love my Strandberg is that it is so uh, compact that it makes it easier for me to you know, to fly out with a guitar. Uh, same thing with the Cortex, you know, to I have- fit it in a backpack. Yeah, I have a tiny little quad Cortex briefcase. Um, and so, you know, this on my back and that, and I have my entire rig ready to go. You know, if we want to do stomp mode, um, you know, we can stomp on our lead. <laughs> And one of the best parts about the Cortex that I really dig is the fact that you can have uh, delay and reverb trails. So, you know, when you switch that off, it doesn't go away automatically. So if you change presets, now all of a sudden, like, you get those tails, and it takes a ton of processing power to do that. So to get it accurate, they really had to spend a lot of time on the engineering side to really make it work. And it, you notice it, it works really well. Um, and then, yeah, if we want to down tune mid song, we can do that. So, can change. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Now we're in C minor. Yeah, um, but yeah, uh, super impressive. Let's let's do another one. Let's do it. Sweet. So, did any of us check the tone? <laughs> okay. So, what is it set at? Everything's set to noon right now. All right. Experiment, experiment tone. Let's let's find out what it sounds like. Let's see. Let's uh, let's do it. Don't 
there's definitely a volume difference between the two. Like the court, like the um, the actual like cortex tone is louder than the than the reference tone. Like. <laughs> I, I like the Cortex tone better than the mic'd up amp sound. I think it's because going into the Cortex, we boosted that U87 a little bit by about 3 dB. Okay, More cool. so than uh, the other mics. That makes it sense. sounds really good. Like, I actually, like, when at first I was like playing, I thought it was the opposite. And I'm like, oh, wait, no. And, like, this is, like, like, what the capture is. Yeah, this is really sick. Very 80s. Like, Very 80s. We're gonna, yeah, we're going to make some 80s sounds. Sweet, let's bust out the hairspray and make a preset. Let's do it. So we have a preset pulled up and we have our JCM 800 capture. So, and here's without any gate or any extra stuff, what it sounds like. And there's barely any noise. That's very quiet. It's very, very it's quiet. It's really quiet. So if we're going to make like kind of like an 80s tread tone, uh, we're going to start out, we're going to gate a little bit because we're going to hit this pretty hard on the front end. Uh, we're going to do, you know, like our standard, like 808, but we're going to boost the overdrive a lot more. So we're going to do level. So it wouldn't be an 80s tone without some chorus um, and especially like maybe like a vintage chorus sound. So we're going to get a modulation. That's a phaser. That would work. That would work. We could do that. Um, let's go to the vintage chorus. And we're also going to have a delay. I'm going to do your standard ping pong. Actually, instead of a ping pong delay, let's go for a tape delay, because mm. that would be more authentic. That already sounds great. So uh, 80s, I love it though. <laughs> So what we're going to do, we're going to boost this a little bit more. If, like for a lead tone, maybe add a little bit of a compressor in there. Uh, we've got like a VCA compressor, which is great. We can do like a fast attack. We can even, you know, throw in, let's let's throw in like a phaser or a flander too. Like just to be like very extra because why not? Because YOLO. Because YOLO. <laughs> um, so let's go for like the... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, we have uh the makings for uh a really great um kind of, you know, throwback sound, you know, your your Def Leppards, your your Van Halens. Um and you know, we can get more creative with this we can you know add this you know in the effects loop uh and make it you know even kind of more interesting change where things are <laughs> you can even add like maybe a reverb in here and this is this is starting to add up as far as like how much dsp is being allocated but um it's handling it all very well. And if we want to see, you know, how much we're even using, we can go down here into the CPU monitor and we're only using 29% and we're using, wow. yeah, we're using a delay and a reverb, tons of modulation, you know, a couple of different, you know, overdrives and compressors. And so have you maxed it out yet? Uh, I haven't been able to. Um, there's, wow. e there's even, uh, there's even a, I don't know how well known it is, but you can continue the line uh, from the top two rows to the bottom two rows, and it's going to double uh, how much uh, DSP you have. Oh, wow. So basically, it like splits the two DSP cores. So if you're running like two guitar rigs, mm -hmm. 
you know, you would use like these, you know, you could use these four lines for, you know, guitar, guitar, bass, etc. cetera. Wow. Um, but if you wanted to get um, way more delays and reverbs in multiple instances, then you could actually continue that on uh, and, you know, have that second row um, and use more DSP, which is great. So here would be rows three and four or uh, row three and four together, which is pretty cool. But yeah. <laughs> super sick yeah yeah that's that's a tone that's a super awesome tone uh <laughs> i don't know is there any anything else we need like an extra boost or something i, I, I love how it sounds oh it sounds I, great very 80s very yeah super super 80s we'll throw one more boost in here why not we're want... we're we've got plenty of dsp so let's we're, keep going we really do. crank it yeah we're gonna add a second overdrive and if you were to if you were to Stack overdrives. What's a popular combination in the studio of like overdrive stacking? The rat. Uh, yeah, for the sure. rat with an with an eight oh eight. Like this, Perfect. just probably too much, but like we'll we'll start at zero. <laughs> Awesome. So we just made some really cool captures. Sounds great. Uh, I mean, what would you say about the difference between doing it at home and doing it in the studio? Um, I would say that there's just so many advantages to a studio environment that a lot of home studios, some will have, not not all. Um, I know in my case, you know, my apartment is my studio. Um, and I do have sound treatment. You know, I have um, a really solid interface with uh, an Apollo uh, Apollo Duo uh, and some analog hardware, which does really come in handy. But there's some things that you really can't get around. You know, the electrical. You know, having some 60 cycle hum coming from you know noisy appliances. Um, you know, even things like certain light bulbs that can generate noise in the signal. Um, so for me, uh, the biggest noticeable difference making a capture at home and making a capture here is just like. The, the operating noise level of the amplifier and just how clean and how much headroom there is. Uh, and I cannot turn my amp up that loud at home. Like it would, yeah, it would generate eviction notices uh, for sure. Yeah, we can help you there at the yeah. studio. We can crank it as loud as we want. Yeah, I mean, especially there are so many factors that come into play when making, uh, when making a capture. The things you have to consider, your, your, your conversion, your preamps, uh, your acoustics, your microphones, cables, just all of it makes a difference. And the end result will be so much better, you know, when you have those things. Like, like the board that we're using right now is, is what, a SSL console? Yep, the AWS uh, 948 Delta. Yeah. Like, you know, when you, when you look at all of those individual things, like those are things that most home studios are not going to have. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, even just the choice of like different preamps to use. Like, what preamps are we using for this one? Are these the SSL preamps? Or? They're not. We're using a set of Day King preamps for this. Uh, yeah. Like, those alone are really expensive pieces of gear. And so, like, to be able to like take my quad cortex here into the studio and be able to like make, you know, these captures, like, the quality level is noticeably different. Um, and you do get some really great. Uh, home studio captures, uh, but there still is definitely a difference in how much work you have to do mm -hmm. to get it closer to that level. And the 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 difference between the two when we're a, a being and comparing is so noticeable. It's so barely noticeable. Uh, it's, it's really impressive and just is a testament uh, to the value of being able to go into a studio. Yeah, I mean, the honestly, the options are endless. You can just run through any outboard gear we've got. We have the really nice converters. 
um, kind of just gives you some more options to play with and some more steps in the chain to add to your captures, which I think is a really cool thing. So that being said, um, we can totally do that for you here at our studios. So feel free to book time with us and we can come happily make more captures with you. Now, hopefully you have a better handle on making captures at home as well and have a better idea of how to get the most out of your quad cortex and out of your captures. I think that's about it. I think we kind of covered all of it. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to head to sweetwater.com or to reach out to your Sweetwater sales engineer, perhaps Dave Dunsire. What's up? <laughs> he can help answer any of your quad cortex questions. And if you'd like to book studio time with us, you can head to sweetwaterstudios.com and check out our website to book time there.